So my wife literally has her face buried all the way, all the way into a 41 ounce bag of Skittles that she stole from our daughter and she is going to eventually kill us and I'm okay with that. <laughs> and uh, that one's for you, Haley. Welcome back to Let's Play Some More, Gran Turismo 3, the ultimate driving simulator, where last time we decided that we were going to take a ride through Tuscany with the Tuscan Speed 6, and we pretty much bent over the competition and uh, shoved a square object in a round hole. And it was ugly. But it was okay. It worked out really well. And so now, what we are going to do, we're going to take this thing all the way. And oh my god, I didn't even realize I even had this thing. <laughs> okay, hold on a minute. <laughs> hold on a minute. We're gonna beef this guy up real quick. Like, that was creepy looking. I don't know why it was. I looked in the viewfinder over here. <laughs> Just like the angle of everything. Everything looked really creepy for a second. Now you look like a sport fanatic ninja. Yeah! Hoya, indeed. Okay, so let's. Yeah! Let's. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my god! It has 1,100 horsepower, man! And that's only with a stage 2 upgrade! What the dick? What in the infinite name of ghost dicks is this all about? <laughs> I mean, I've always subscribed to the idea that ghosts have dicks. Just because they're ectoplasm doesn't mean they don't have reproductive organs. A ghost has... To, ghosts have to get, okay? Even if you're getting in the ghost of your grandma's house, you still, you still gotta get. It's just, you know... People have needs. <laughs> even if, ghosts even if, apparently too. Ghosts have needs? Well, you never seen ghosts give each other blowies? It's crazy. <laughs> I haven't seen it either, but I'm sure it happens. <laughs> it happens! You know? It's just, it's a different social construct out there, but it happens. Zach Bagans! Find me the ghost that gets laid. When he, when he went, when he went to, uh, to the Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, uh, he went down in the in the basement area where there was the old brothel or whatever, and they totally one of them said something, not like oh, "I'm gonna suck your dick," but it was something like suggestive, it like was that. Like, like getting better. Yeah, that. something like that. So, I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys have at least like some burritos or tacos or some some Doritos or some type of food in mass quantity because by God. We're going. We're going all the way. We're doing the 300 km from Grand Valley. I've, I've put off doing endurance races for a while, with the exception of the Seattle one, because we did that not super long ago. But we're going. We're doing the we're doing the big boy thing. By the way, not for nothing. I don't know what all the hubbub is about nacho cheese Doritos. Like, I get it. They're good. They really are. Okay, what do we have here? We got Penzoil Nismo Denso Sard Supra, which is like my dog. Loctite Zexel, the old Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. We got an Arda NSX. We should be able to win this. I, I feel pretty good about that, but... Dude, we gotta go up against all the ones that I like, though. <laughs> That's the part that hurts. Well, to answer your, uh... Holy your sh... Question. Holy sh... This car is so fast! Answer your Doritos uh, question. Well, you've heard how, you know, silence is gold, death gets silver. Uh-huh. Well, Cool Ranch is gold. And this motherfucker is silver. No, Cool Cool Ranch is platinum. Like, Cool Ranch Doritos, that really, that really is the ultimate MVP, man. Those... It goes on everything. It, they're so good. Like, the thing, the thing with Cool Ranch Doritos is that you can, you can eat those and every bite always tastes good. Even the ones that don't have as much of the seasoning stuff on them, they still always taste good. The thing with with the with the nacho cheese ones is after a it's while, cold. it stops tasting like anything. Not to mention the amount of you know cheese powder that gets all over your fingers, and then and then things get Dorito fingers. There's nothing worse than picking up the remote that had Dorito fingers on them. That is, out, the only thing that's worse than that is Cheeto fingers. Because I, I think that is ultimately worse. Especially well, no, that's not that bad. I'm talking about, like, Cheeto Puffs because it has all the oil on them. Oh, 
and it, they start it gets all moist and gross that's ugh, <laughs> I know that's I hate that word moist is about as bad of a word as damp huh ugh. Ugh. there is there is no better a word to kill a In boner a cool, than than the moist damp area <laughs> There is nothing more boner killing than that word. Just moist. <laughs> like, li like limp isn't even as bad, or like flaccid. And flaccid just is, uh, that's that's too flaccid. that's that's too medical sounding, you know. That's sad. Like ah, flaccid. Mmm. It's just it's all bad. You got moist pussy. Ugh, gross. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Young man may be awake, I, I believe. Dun, dun, dun. So, she might either be going out to dole some punishment because the kids aren't sleeping, or young Harrison may have awakened from his many hour slumber and is now in a seething rage that will cause the end of an empire somewhere, I am, sh I am almost certain. So, oh. So, here's the. Oh, by the way, by the way. I have news for you guys. Um, I have so I, I had I had a job interview the other day. What do you want, by the way? Oh, he wants to see if the kids wanted to know some magnesium to sleep because I'm, edibles are against the law. I mean, well, for kids, yeah, they totally are against the law. Problem is, magnesium they'll end up waking up with diarrhea, gear and fucking teed. And I don't need I don't need that excuse. I can't sleep because my ass hurts. <laughs> I don't know they would. Um, true, but yeah. So I had I had a job interview on uh, what was that Tuesday? Sure. It was on Tuesday, and it was for uh, it was for. Uh, oh God, sorry. That was that was a chili belch. Um, so I had I had an interview for a company called Blue Raven Solar. They are a solar paneling company. I was, kind of, I was browsing around through some different places on, on Indeed, and that was one that sounded pretty interesting. And they pay very handsomely. I thought, I thought that it was going to be like an office job where, you know, you're, you're locking up some, you know, some appointments and, and handling, you know, some customer service type things. Little did I know when I got into the interview that uh, they were wanting me to do door-to-door -door sales, which hell, dick, hell to the fuck no, like. Like it's and it's not even the fact that you know that I that I don't wouldn't want to work for the company because I mean it, they seem like a pretty they seem like a pretty laid back cool you know organization or what have you but the I I've never been the kind of dude doing door to door sales like I hated even during little league like during little league when you'd go door to door trying to sell candy bars to people because you know they're just there's always a fucking excuse for them not to do it. You go, oh, I'm on a diet, but I'm 478 pounds, and I've got a case of Nestle Crunch in my fucking kitchen. But no, no, I'm not going to help you, young lad. I'm not going to spend 20 bucks and buy half of your crate. See, I always had a nice person where if they didn't buy Girl Scout cookies, they always didn't. Yeah, see, I never had that kind of luck. I lived it. Because I'm a girl and you're a boy. Yeah. I like our Hey, the Piece of shit candy hey, bars taste like you crap. can't you can't sit here and tell me that Nestle crackle bars aren't good because they taste like crap. They do not. They do too. Crackles are a national treasure, damn it, and I will defend that to my grave. Thin mints and Samoas will kick your ass every day. I didn't say Samoas wouldn't kick my ass, but Thin Mints can go jump up a rope. Oh, I love Thin Mints. No, they're really frozen. No, they're really good. Though. Delicious. <laughs> they are. They are really good, but. Yeah, so they, they wanted me to do door-to-door -door sales, which, you know, then I then I was just like, all right, well, this is different than what I thought you guys were pitching, so I don't really know if that's what I'm looking for. So that one, unfortunately, went by the wayside. That kind of sucks because, you know, I'm still out there looking for things, but it was really weird. It was just one of those things. It was, it was such an awkward moment when I realized that what they were pitching wasn't what I was looking for. <laughs> and so I'm just like, um... They're like so at the so for a while I was just kind of going along with it. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, it's, you know, sounds it's definitely way out of my comfort zone. Um, but and you know they wanted me to work like anywhere between like 30 to like 50 hours a week, drive you know, 
going door to door from anywhere between Portland all the way down to Medford, which is a long way. And that's just, uh, that is that is no bueno. Also, me driving around in the cat box is no bueno. Um, and so then I had to, she's like, at the, at the end, she's like, so do you have, do you have any questions? She's like, you kind of look like you're a little apprehensive. And I was like, well, <laughs> to be honest, this is not really what I was envisioning this job was going to be. I thought it was going to be more of an office environment thing, so maybe I read the description of this incorrectly, or maybe you guys just worded it the wrong way. Um, so, yeah, no, no good there. But, what, what do you do? So, that's, that's the update on that front. More at 11. Um, another story that I've got is, so, I've never really had a problem with delivery people, like, ever, necessarily. Like, they, usually they're always pretty cool. Um, but I had a dude that was working for UPS that came by the other day that was a fucking asshole. And, and if you are that guy and you're watching this, I hope <laughs> that's you a hot, that's That is a high coincidence, by the way, if he just so happens to be watching this. I'm standing by it. You were a dick, dude. And I kind of sort of hope that you blow out a tire while you're driving way too slow to go get to your delivery place. But... So this guy, he, he comes in, he comes and brings in a whole load of, of, of products that were all COD that, you know, I got to pay, I got to pay for with checks. And normally, whenever any delivery person from any place decides to bring their stuff in, um, they always, you know, they'll always bring it to the back and then I have to go in the back room and I write checks for them. And they're super, they're super cool about it and they're polite and they, they help get me all the, all the money totals for everything so that... I can give it to them, they can get the hell out of here and go move on with their lives to go deliver dildos to the adult store down the road or whatever it is that they gotta do. And, uh, but this guy was on, like, some total fucking power trip or whatever. Like, you know, his life was the most important thing in the world and everybody else could just go, you know, shove their ass in front of a semi. But he comes in and he's like, I was like, oh, you can go put all that stuff in the bag. He's like, well, I'm gonna need, I, I need checks for this. I was like, okay, well, uh, the guy in the office back there can get those for you because, you know, I was on the phone. So I was going to have my dad take care of them. And so I get off the phone and he's... Uh-oh, what the fuck happened there? That was weird. <laughs> the gas totally kept going. I took my finger off, off of the accelerator and it kept on driving. That was nuts. Um, and so he starts walking out of the back area because my dad was apparently on the phone. And... So I go back and I'm gonna help him, and he's like, he's like, I don't have enough time to sit here and wait for you guys to get these checks ready, but I have to, I have to get out of here. I was like, hold on, hold on, let me get them for you real quick. And he's like, he's like, all right, fine. And so I start writing these things, I start trying to write these things out, and I'm asking him to get me some money totals off of them so that I could write these checks faster for him. And he's just standing there in the corner, you know, throwing this little tantrum like a bitch, and. So I, I'm trying to get some more info out of him, and all of a sudden he's just like, you know, you know what would really help me out? You guys are supposed to have these things ready for me when I show up, because I don't have all day to sit here and wait for you guys to write them out by hand. You guys are supposed to coordinate these things and have them ready for me when I show up. And it's like, um, I didn't even know you were even delivering this stuff today, so how am I even supposed to know that I'm supposed to have checks ready for you? Like, they, these when we send orders in with these companies, they don't tell us you know, when exactly this shit's gonna be here, so we don't, we don't know. And it's like, you're the first person to ever complain about that. So, I'm sitting here trying to write out a couple more, and he's like, he's like, I have to leave. But, he's like, I'll, I'll come back in a few minutes, but I have to leave. I have to go, I have to go run an errand. And so, he goes and jumps in, and I, I have these things ready for him when he comes back. And he comes in, and I give it to him, and my dad goes out and talks to him. And he's just like, he's like, I'd really appreciate it if you have these, all, these things all ready for me next time, because I don't have time to sit around and wait for you. And my dad's like, this has never been a problem before. He's like, we, you guys have been delivering to us for 50 years, and you're the first person that's ever seemed to have had a problem with with doing that. Everybody else always, you know, has no issues sitting around waiting for a second. And uh, he's like, he's like, hey man, it's just the nature of the job. He's like, no, it's not. That's the that's the nature of you. <laughs> I was just like, whoa. My dad doling out the punishment. He's like, he's like, by the way, if you deliver us to us next time, I'd enjoy some better customer service. He's like, yeah, I'll get right on that. <laughs> I was just like, this dude is fucking asking to die. This, this dude, this dude is asking to fucking die right now. It was, it was bad. But that, that's like, like, that guy's a fucking dick. 
Like, you don't sit there and treat people like that, and it's like, apparently your time is more valuable than everyone else in the world? Get the fuck out of here. You're delivering people's mail for a living. You know, not that I have a problem with that, because I totally tried to apply to work for UPS, but it's like, I wouldn't have treated people like shit just because I was lollygagging around on my route and decided, oh no, I'm behind the gun, and so I should probably hurry the fuck up. So, you know. But that's kind of my, that was my spiel. That was the thing that I found interesting. So, you got anything you want to add? While, uh, while we move through the next couple of laps here, we're going to, I'm going to try Happy and... Happy Veterans Day! Jeez! <laughs> I was, I was not ready for that. I mean, yeah, Veterans Day is totally tomorrow, and that's exciting. It's observed tomorrow. Today is technically That's right, that's right. Yeah. That's, see, that's, that's weird to me. Like, it's weird that... That's weird that, that, like, I don't feel like that happens. I don't feel like a, a holiday, like a national holiday like that happens on a day and then they really acknowledge it on a different one. I, just, I don't know. Maybe it's just because Veterans Day normally occurs during the week. She got to go to North Korea once, at a time where, well, I guess it's it's always been pretty wildly unsafe to go there, but yeah, she, had to sign her she did. She had to she had to sign a waiver that basically said if they if they catch you over there, <laughs> we we you have we have there. literally no knowledge that you're even a human being or that you were over there. So if they catch you, <laughs> you're basically fucked, and we're not coming we're not after you. Your yeah, so it's like just uh. Don't be stupid over there, but but super serious. Like, tell us what they're doing. So my my mom to me, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm thankful, obviously, for every single service member. Um, it was uh, interesting growing up. I'm a military brat. I'm very proud to be a military brat. Um, born in Iceland. Born in Iceland. So not even uh, technically from here. I am so thankful for all the sacrifices that our service and women, you know, that, that they make to sit there and leave their family, regardless of what the situation is for, they leave their family so that way you, you have every freedom that you have. They leave their family to defend your own. And, you know, and even more so with that, the service members' um, families themselves and the sacrifices that... Um, that they make are tremendous. You, mm -hmm. especially if you're on, on a base, you don't know whether or not your spouse is, you know, going to be coming home. Or for those that you know, have a spouse that it's just it's their parents, and you don't know whether or not your parents are going to come home. So you're constantly waiting for, you know, that knock on the door, and you're watching every piece of news that you possibly can get. You see of what's going on and what have you when your families are on deployment. Um, and there are such things as training accidents. So to me, if you sit back and think, well, they're just going over for a training exercise, they may not finish you. And it's a very scary thought, and I appreciate everything that our men and women do and everything that, that their families do as well. Um, our daughter's uh, father is... Um, those of you, if you guys are service members or, you know, past present, if you guys are... Watching while you're out, while you're out and deployed. So thank you so, so much for everything that you guys do and all the sacrifices that you guys make. I appreciate it. I, I applaud every single one of you. You guys are keeping the home front safe so that we can use our liberty of leaving mean comments on YouTube while we're taking a hot shit. <laughs> so, you know... That's uh, that is num numero uno in the in in the world there. Our tires are going to literally fly off if I don't get them changed. So also another thing on top of that, um, in in light of all of the uh, all the crap that's been going on down in California, um, 
This is why I'm glad I don't live down there, by the way. And the, the threat of fires like this are... Ugh. I don't know how many of you guys uh, live down in California. If you guys are affected by by the fires or whatever the case may be, but if you guys are um, affected, if there's anything, you know, that, that we can do, you know, just check in, you know, make sure that you guys are okay, you know, let us know, so that way we can say, hey, you know, let's check in on this person, see how they're doing, you know, what have you. We might be, you know, simply just on... I know of a couple, I know... Boxes there. I know a couple of viewers uh, that live down in the California area. Uh, only one that I can think of right off the top of my head at the moment. So, um, Jose, I hope you're doing okay down there. Let us know, please. Shoot us a line if you if you see this. Just let us know that you're okay. I'm friends with him on Facebook. I'll I'll, I'll check it out a little bit later. See oh. see how he's doing down there. Hopefully good. And everybody else. Um, not to disparage you guys. I hope I hope all of you guys are doing well out there physically and mentally. Oh, nice. Mental health is always important, as is physical health. So, hope everyone's doing good out there. I hope that my videos are a bright spot in a, in a dark world for you. So. And I'm always on Facebook also. I know a lot of you guys follow ads on, uh, on Facebook or Instagram or what have you. I'm also on there. If you guys ever want to shoot a line, you know, whatever the, the case may be, I'm, I'm always there. So, reach out. Definitely. Oh, God. God, it's like going no! from it's like going from one extreme to the other. <laughs> I go from my tires literally being worn down to being totally bald like a baby's ass, or now that no, I, I know. So basically, I'm saying that my <laughs> I'm saying that my my infant son's ass is like a pair of worn tires. <laughs> I couldn't even get it out without it being awkward. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, so that's that's what uh, that's what that is. And now I changed to a brand new pair, and they're equally as ridiculous to try to handle. But as it looks, we're going to win this thing running away. I mean, it's not even going to be even remotely close. It's it's going to be like at this point, I want to see if I can get the I want to see if I can get the winning margin up to a couple of minutes. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see. We will see what happens. But I think what's going to happen is after. This lap, we are going to call it an episode, and then we will uh, we'll take a mini break, refresh the refresh ourselves, and then uh, we'll come back on to talk about some more stuff. So, until then, this is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, and my awesome wife saying thank you guys for stopping by, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes to fo to film the next segment of this because we're gonna finish this whole race in one sitting. So, or one, you never know, we can do that too. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's, 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 all right, you guys take it easy. We'll see you next time. I can't do that with my hand very well. Durka. Durka, Durka. I'm Muhammad Ali. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Bye.